this beautiful lady, I'm going to, I met her about a year and a half, almost two years ago. And all of you know when I have, or most of you know when I have a, a new client, the first thing I do is I notify all my small business colleagues to let them know, hey, this, this is a new client on board. There may be some opportunities. Well, this just happened to be on a high profile project, a project that has a, is going to be recognized as the highest performing government building in the nation. Um, it's actually, the client is GSA. Um, and this project is with Selen Construction. Some of you may know that, that contractor. Well, on that project, they had 37% small business goals. And on a project with LEED uh, requirements, folks know how difficult it is for our small businesses to compete and even get an opportunity on that project. Well, I'm very pleased to say not only was Dana Pittman uh, president of Sustainable Floors awarded a contract, um, that contract was approaching seven figures. And that's the kind of economic development opportunities that we're trying to create for our membership. We're not looking for that one shot wonder. We're looking for that opportunity to be able to build capacity and create some residual income and revenue and build long-lasting relationships so our children can take over. So with no further ado, I'd like to introduce Dana Pittman, EIW's first president. <laughs> Red Diamond, by the way. <laughs> Ironically, I don't drink. <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe we should put it up to the highest bidder. That'd be a good contribution to EIW. That could be the first revenue generating activity we have. Well, how do I follow the distinction of these two gentlemen and the tenacity of um, Dan? First off, I just, I feel really honored and privileged to be here. Wasn't prepared. <laughs> It's just been a little crazy, but um, just a little about myself is that I've actually only been in the construction business since July of, actually June of 2005. Before that, I was in the medical field, and before that, I was active duty military, 15-year veteran in the Army. And I was in law enforcement and corrections, so I've always loved the challenge. I have three older brothers, I'm the youngest girl, and I'm like an only child because my, old, my youngest brother is eight years older than me. So I've always felt like I was always trying to catch up to somebody. And I finally figured out, I don't need to catch up with anybody, I just need to recognize who I am, kind of set my sights on what I feel is a good goal for me and go towards it. The thing is, is that I'm the type of person, I don't like to just do it by myself. I like to take people with me. I'm really a big people person, and I'm big on relationship. Well, when I came into the construction business, first off, don't tell anybody I'm a girl. <laughs> OK? So obviously, I don't know the right end of the hammer to swing. I mean, I'm not trying to be funny, I'm just being real. That's what I came up against. And then, minority. So they're thinking I'm looking for a hand out. It's like, no, I don't need a hand out. I would like a hand up. I would like some information on how you make this happen. I always had the drive to do it, and I also have the business partner that had the experience in flooring. So, as we went through this, going, you know, we can do this. And I worked for somebody where I was like, I would never treat my employee like that. I would never treat somebody else like that. And I'm always of the school of thought is, I went to school for like business and psychology, and I also do um, counseling and life coaching and mentoring and things like that. But I've always been of the school of thought is, if you think you can do it better. Don't become a part of the problem, become part of the solution. So I was like, we can do this. Didn't know what the heck we were doing. It's like, it's only 20 bucks to get a business license. Let's go for it. 
that's just kind of the way I went at it. But then as I got more into it and start realizing the struggles, the challenges, and the roadblocks in this business, I start, stop knocking on the door and start kicking them down. That's kind of my approach to things. And I start to learn what it took to do what it takes to take a business from conception, idea, and a dream, and from its inception to grow it more than 30%, sometimes 37% every year since we've been in business. And I was like, this is pretty cool. The thing is, is that nobody has a place where you can go and learn where do I go? Who do I talk to? Not all in one place, not where, as he says, aggregate. Is that the proper word? Aggregator. Aggregator. He uses these big $50 words. I'm just, you know. <laughs> but um, that's kind of what EIW is looking at, is where can we take the best practice, the best ideas, the best approach to grow small business. Not just the construction business, but small business, because small businesses and entrepreneurs are kind of unique. Sometimes we don't know where our next paycheck is coming from. Sometimes, you know, our employees are maybe not getting paid like they need to. There's the challenges with the monies. There's the challenges with landing the contract. There's the challenges with just keeping the doors open. And not everybody is willing to give you the information you need to make that happen. Not everybody knows the answers to your questions and if they don't know the answer, they usually try to make it sound like they do and never really answer it instead of going, you know what? I really don't know what that is. Why don't we look in that together? Or let me jot that down and check it out. Or I know a person, because I'm the type of person, I'll be honest, I don't know everything. I don't want to know everything. There's not enough room up there for it. But it's good to know the people who know what you need to know. You maximize your strengths and you delegate your weakness. Why take something you're only a three or four at, and at the best maybe a five or six eventually, and bust your backside doing it, or take something that you're eight or nine at, and without as much effort, become a 10 or better, and know where your weakness is and let somebody else do it. Things like that, people don't tell you that when you go into business. People don't explain that. I figured that one out on my own. You know, it's like get all the right people on the bus, get them in the right seat, and get them in the right direction. And that's what EIW wants to become. That, uh, that is our dream, that's our hope, our, that's our desire, to be able to get the right people on the bus, get them in the right seat, and get them pointed in the right direction so that they can grow their business. So, I think I can do is say, you know, we may not have all the answers, but we're going to try to be honest and be like, we don't have the answer, but here's somebody who can help you with that, or we can research it, and let's just help one another get to where all of us have the desire to be, because everybody was created to do something great. Nobody's ever dreamed about just being mediocre or good. Everybody's always wanted to do something great. And that's what EIW is about, is making small business great in the state of Washington. So hopefully we can do that. And if we're not in the right direction, please tell us. If we're driving down the wrong road, would you help us turn the wheel and get the bus going in the direction it needs to go? Thank you for all your time and support. And highest bidder? <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to try to auction. Maybe I can try that. <laughs>